Hi guys, my name is Lawrence Baker. I'm an Adobe Certified Expert in Photoshop CC and Photoshop Lightroom. This video is going to be about soft proofing inside Lightroom. What is meant by soft proofing? Well, it means representing on the screen what your destination color space uh, would look like. Now, every device uh, in the digital imaging world has a color space. Now, I happen to want to output this image to a print bureau online. So I've downloaded their color profiles, which have the file format .icc, International Color Consortium. So I now have to soft proof this image against that color profile. Now, to get the color profiles into Lightroom, you have to load them into your system. You're not bringing them into Lightroom as such. Lightroom is recognizing them within your system. So when you put a new printer onto your system, automatically those color profiles will become available to Lightroom and any other um, bit of software that needs to use them. Now I had to download my color profiles from my print bureau's website. Now if your print bureau doesn't offer this facility, don't use them. But the crucial thing with working in a color managed workflow is to make sure your own screen has been profiled. So the colors you see on screen when they go to another color profiled um, device should be represented as best they can. Now, obviously, every color space has a gamut of colors and it's spelled G-A-M-U-T. And some color spaces have larger gamuts than others. Now, I'm currently here in Profoto RGB. I've got a profile monitor. So if I go to another color profile workspace or export this, most of these colors will be respected. Some will be out of gamut. And the out of gamut colors will be um, shown to me when I soft proof this image. Now I have a decision to make, whether to bring those colors back into the gamut of the destination profile, or just leave it as it is and hope the software with the printer, let's say, does its best to get as close to those colors as it can. And if you profiled your monitor, it won't do too bad a job. But soft proofing allows you to see or make that decision. And if you want to bring those colors back into gamut, you have to play around with the sliders inside the develop module to bring those colors back into the gamut of the destination profile. Now, what do I mean by color space? Let's go to my color sync utility, which is one of the uh, utilities you get with a map show you the color spaces you've got in your system. Now, Adobe RGB 1998 was probably put there when I put Adobe products on my system. That's a graphical representation of the gamut of colors. If I want to compare it to another color space, I go hold for comparison. Now, these are my print bureau color spaces, color profiles, which I've uploaded into my system. You'll have to learn how to do it yourself because it's different on Windows and it's different on a Mac. So I'm gonna compare it to this Fuji Gloss. In grey is Adobe RGB 1998. In colour is the print space C-Type Fuji Gloss. As you can see, that colour space for the printer is much smaller than Adobe RGB 1998 and definitely much smaller than Profoto RGB, which is a much bigger space. As some of these colour spaces, you wouldn't be able to discern every colour with, the, with the, your eye. Definitely not with Profoto RGB. It's a compromise, really. So what you're going to try and do is say, well, I know those colors are not going to be in that color space. Do I leave it alone or do I try and bring them back in? That's what soft proofing is all about. I'm going to close that down now and show you soft proofing. Now I can click on the bottom left hand corner here and tick that on. I can go to uh, view soft proofing and go show proof. And it just means hitting S. Let's do it now. If I press S on my keyboard, it'll take me back out to a non-proof copy. This is the proof copy. I would always say create a proof copy straight away, but if you didn't start playing around with these sliders, it would prompt you to create a proof copy. Now I'm going to untick that now and explain what everything means here. This is the monitor. Now this is in this color space here, the print space C-Type Fuji Gloss. I can pick another one if I want to, let's say sRGB um, or Adobe RGB 1998. I can pick any color space and find stuff under other as well and tick boxes. But basically, I'm now going to show you um, on that print C type Fuji gloss, which I got from my print bureau. Now, if I click on this, that's what the monitor can't cope with in that C type Fuji gloss color space or can't represent properly. 
you wouldn't need to use this very often, so I don't often use it. Uh, the one you're interested in is the destination one. It's got the paper symbol there with the right-hand top corner folded down. I could go to View, Soft Proofing, and show it under Destination Gamut Warning or Monitor Gamut Warning. 99% uh, of the time, you want it on Destination Gamut Warning. If you didn't and had both on, you can see everything at once. Now, what's in pink is what the monitor can't show and what the printer can't show. The output destination profile can't show. So if I take that off now and zoom back in, because I'm not interested in what the monitor can't show. I'm interested in what my uh, output can't show. This print space. Um, that's the company I use, by the way. Um, yes. Now, I have a decision to make. I've got a profile monitor. If I didn't uh, try and bring those colours back into the gamut of the printer, the printer would do its best. And it often would be quite good. Now, if I don't profile my monitor, I'm not in a colour space workflow. You're completely wasting your time soft proofing. So let's get on with the soft proofing. I'm going to create a proof copy. Now, if you didn't do it, as I say, stop playing around with these sliders. Let's say I could go into the basic panel here and bring the saturation down. As you will see, I've brought all those colours back into space into the gamut color space, but oh look, uh, create proof coffee, make this a proof. Make this a proof or make the one, you know, the master copy the proof. I don't recommend that. Always create a proof copy, but I'm going to undo on this occasion because I didn't want to move that uh, vibrance, or that saturation slider. So I'm going to create a proof copy now. Now, just to show you, if I go back out to the grid and I um, make the thumbnails a bit larger, um, you'll see that's got the print space. You can't see it very clearly, but that's what the actual name is. It's got a virtual, it's a virtual copy and it's got the corner turned up there, which is a good indication it's a virtual copy. And that's my master copy left alone. So if I press D to get back to this, um, this one here, my decision now is how do I get rid of this red overlay? Now, I don't recommend doing a global adjustment with the basic panel because you're shifting all the colors in the picture. I could go to the color panel and shift the hue, and hue means color in the color world. And saturation is how intense that color is, or hue is. So color's not used in the color managed world, they always talk about hue, and saturation is how intense that hue is. So I could play around the luminance, I could play around the saturation, I could play around the hue. But the only way of doing it accurately is to use the targeted adjustment tool here. So if you click that and go into the image, and I need to be zoomed in here, I'm going to zoom in a hell of a lot, three to one. If I brought that down on the hue now, I could shift the hue back into the gamut of the destination profile. So I'm going like this. I'm actually, am I, yes, I am. I'm bringing it in, but I'm making it slightly yellow. So mm, I'm not 100% happy with that. Now I'll go back to my history um, and go back to create proof copy. I could do it with the saturation and I would always again use the targeted adjustment tool. So let's do it again. A dragging down is dragging left, dragging up is making it more saturated. So there are, I'm bringing it out and I'm actually so, well actually I'm not doing a bad job there. Um, you can be as fussy as you want, I've got most of it out there. So let's go back out and see where I am. I've still got those blues there, so let's do the blues. I'm not zooming in again, guys. I'm just doing it like this. I've done quite a good job there. I've got stuff on that umbrella. I prefer the saturation route, but you must always use this target adjustment tool. There's stuff inside there, inside that tent. It's a very dark area. I'm not too worried about it. Stuff around the greens there. I should be zoomed in, but I'm not, guys. I'm just doing it quickly. So you can see I've nearly done it all, really. But I think the image looks a bit flat. So I'm going to go back to, in history, to the proof copy. And my favourite method is to use the adjustment brush. Now, I'm not going to cover the adjustment brush in any detail. I've covered it in a previous video. But if you really want to know about adjustment brush, the things you really want to understand are density, feather and flow. Flow is about how much you're laying down each stroke. Density is about the overall density because it's like a mask over your image and you're, you're masking out your image with this brush and it's about how transparent that mask is. Um, it's a bit more complex than that but I recommend you read up on it or you go to see one of my other videos on the adjustment brush. But I never use the adjustment brush without some feather 
and I never use it at 100% density and I never use it at 100% flow. But you do need to be zoomed in, obviously. So I'm going into three to one here. And obviously you set up your brush how you want it. And if I double click on effect, it'll always zero out the sliders. Now I want to bring down the saturation here. And there we go. Am I having any effect? No, I'm having some. I'm not doing a bad job there. Um, so there you go. I've got auto mask on, but it won't make that much difference because it doesn't recognize this overlay. It's only against the edges in the document. So having it on or off doesn't really make any difference. I could turn it off and it'll be fine. Um, there you go. Now you can see how laborious this method is, but I would say it's the best method of doing it if you want to get really fussy. And of course, you'll have to use different brushes for different areas. I could play around with this, this saturation slider now and bring it back up and bring those colours back in so or I could take it down and take even more out, you know. This is the fussy way of doing it. Right. Right guys, I'm going to zoom back out now. Now you get the idea. That's how you can bring the colours back into the gamut of your destination space. The intent, perceptual relative, um, just click on either or. I can explain what they mean but... Perceptual is about your eye, it's trying to fool the eye. Relative is more accurate, but it darkens it down slightly. But just click on either or. If you want to read up about rendering intents, do so. But it'll make this video too long if I go into it. And I think uh, perceptual keeps it bright, so I'm going to stay with that. So simulate paper and ink, why wouldn't you? Um, of course, I would always simulate paper and ink if I'm going out to print. Also, um, profiling your monitor is so important. If you don't profile your monitor, you're not in a color managed workflow, so you do need to profile it. And you also can either do it by hand or buying a device. And as I say, I use um, a Spider 5 from Data Color, Spider 5 Elite. Um, but if you can't afford it, do it by hand, Google it, you'll find out how to do it. That's it, guys. Um, the color managed workflows, the whole subject is massive, but for just going out to a printer, I recommend totally that you do. Soft proof. If you're going to soft proof, you must um, profile your monitor. Um, that's the most important thing in a color managed workflow. If you're going out to the web, you could probably, if you want to get really fussy, um, soft proof to sRGB, but I think you're wasting your time slightly because not everyone has got a profile monitor. Probably 0.001% of us in the world have got profile monitors. But if you're serious about photography and going out to another printer, you must profile your monitor. Um, I'll let you read up on that, Google it. Um, I think I've covered everything. Thanks very much.